What's up guys? Welcome back to BT Willis Garage. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on the TRD Pro. Don't worry if you've got an SR5, an off-road Pro, pretty much a 2012 to 2019 Forerunner. The process is the same. The only thing that may be slightly different is the skid plate. Um, so this is going to cover the Pro skid plate removal process. To be honest with you, the other models are even easier, so don't let that scare you. But I hope that this is helpful for anybody that this is a first time oil change, maybe a second or third time, and you don't remember the socket sizes, the oil quantity, that type of stuff. I'm going to make this super helpful. It is going to be informative and slightly in depth, but I hope that this is extremely helpful. There's links to all the products that I use in the description. You guys enjoy and uh, keep taking care of your Forerunner. It'll last forever. Thanks. Man, I love this Forerunner. I do have a little third gen over there too that we're going to be giving some love in. So if you guys own a fifth and a third gen, definitely subscribe. This channel's for you. All right, so let's get started. Um, a couple tools that you're going to need, definitely need, is a 12 millimeter socket, a 17 millimeter socket, as well as a 14 millimeter if you have a TRD Pro to take off the skid plate. We're going to do that first. In addition, you're going to need 6.6 .6 quarts of 0W20 oil. I prefer Mobile One. You guys use whatever you want. Just make sure it's th synthetic. I like using synthetic. You are going to need an oil filter. You'll see that I chose to use OEM. There's the part number. Um, in the kit, it does come with pretty much everything you need to drain it, as well as new O-rings, which is cool. So I've got my sockets and wrenches over there whatever you need to make a 14, 17, and 12 millimeter work, uh, go ahead and get, I'm gonna use an impact because it makes life quicker to take it off, not necessarily to put it on because that's how you strip out this uh, skid plate. Uh, if you guys have heard the horror stories, then you know what I mean. Here is the, um, I guess we'll call it the oil drain pan, you know, drain bucket, whatever that I use. It's got this nice little extension piece uh, so the oil doesn't splatter. The cardboard is optional, but I like to protect my concrete. If you guys are working in the garage often, you probably have a creeper, but it helps to save your back, um, as well as these rhino ramps. Not necessary to pull up like I did and you just saw, but it does give you more space and uh, you can move your arms around without getting cramped. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by removing the skid plate. All right, guys, so we got one, two, three, four. When you take that fourth one off, make sure it doesn't bash you in the face. All right, guys, from here, we're going to move right behind the skid plate and we're going to take our 12 millimeter and remove this little access protective cover with our 12 millimeter socket. Pretty quick and easy job. Watch your eyes, wear safety glasses if you go off roading. Mine's probably sandy and muddy. So, from here, mine may differ from yours a little bit because I do have this Fomato valve, and I'm gonna show you why. If you don't have this, all you're gonna do is use your 12 millimeter socket and take off the oil drain bolt. All that I have to do, let me try to do this where you can see, is flip this little switch. Look at that. I don't have to put a bolt back in, no mess. It's going right into the pan. I'm gonna let that drain. I will put a link to the Fomato valve. They're like 25 bucks. And if you're changing your old, own oil, do it, do it, do it. It makes life so much easier. It does drain a little slow. That's why I like to let this one go first and then I'll move to the oil filter next. While that's draining, a little pro tip for you. Go ahead and pop your hood and put your oil somewhere that you can recognize that your truck needs to be filled with oil now before you start it. I've heard of a lot of people making a stupid mistake and cranking their truck while their oil is completely dry. Don't be that person. Just a little pro tip while your oil is draining. 
So another little pro tip while your oil is draining would be to go ahead and top off your windshield wiper fluid. No funnel needed for this. This stuff doesn't hurt anything unless you just feel like you waste a ton of it. But my wife and I are going on a trip. My little brother's graduating college this weekend, which is awesome. Congrats to Alex. So we're going to get that filled up in case we encounter bugs on the way. Or if we we're going to spray people that are tailgating us. Now that that's done draining, we're going to either put our drain bolt back in or flip our Fumato valve, clean it up with a little microfiber. And if you have the Fumato valve, be sure to uh, put your protective cover back on. That'll keep the switch from being flipped, even though you have armor. It's just peace of mind that you're not going to drain your oil out when you're going down the highway. And next we're going to put this cover back on. So next we're going to focus our attention and move our drain pan underneath this here, which is your oil filter housing. So I'm just going to turn this to the left and it does take a little bit of pressure. And sometimes a little cap comes off. Sometimes it doesn't. It looks like it doesn't want to come off today, which is fine. So at some point here soon, it's going to get messy since we don't have the easy access. And I'll show you. Sorry for straining. Let me get this off and I'll pick back up. Um, it's about to get messy. But I'll show you how to replace that o-ring if it does come off on yours I'm gonna let that drain and just notice my positioning is perfect to where we're getting minimal minimal splatter all right guys we got it out so pretty much if this came out on yours there's an o-ring in here that's pretty clear you can use a toothpick or a small pick tool to take it out and replace it. If you replace it, just dab your finger in some oil and get the O-ring kind of lubricated up and that's gonna help it last. Now, when this piece doesn't come off, I don't even bother. I mean, pretty much that O-ring down in there is, is good. I replace it half the time, half the time it doesn't wanna come off. Comment, please, if, uh, if you guys change your oil regularly and I doubt too many of you that do are watching this video. But if you find that that's the case with yours, I'd be, I'd be curious um, to know if I'm the only one dealing with that problem. But I just say screw it. I don't replace it if it doesn't come off. It's not worth putting in a vise and potentially ruining this plastic piece to try to get that little metal cap off. So anyway, I'm going to grab my pick tool. We're going to get the sew ring off, get it lubricated, and put the new filter on and keep moving. We're going to get this back installed. Here's the kit again, and another quick note, if that cap came off, all you have to do is plug this. Pretty much, if that cap came off, you plug this in, and it drains it for you. It's super cool. So, congrats if that works. As soon as you plug it in, it's going to come pouring out, so make sure your hand's out of the way. But uh, that's helpful. And then, like I mentioned, this O-ring kit, it comes with the O-ring that goes big one here as well as that little one that I'm not going to be replacing today so anyway here's my pick tool I'm just gonna grab that o-ring and pull it off I'm gonna separate the package get my new o-ring get it lubed up a little bit and put it back on and just keep in mind that it goes on this bottom fat area right in between that lip so not, not in between the two lips, but that top one here beneath the threads in between the first lip. I'm going to get that put on now. And I think it's completely fine just to use old oil to lube it up. Doesn't have to be new because that's not even really touching the, um, the motor at all. So I'm just going to stretch this around and get it down in that bottom groove I was telling you about. You can see it there. All right, next we're ready for our oil filter. This is the cartridge filter. This is the OEM I prefer to use. I'm just gonna shove it all the way down and we're gonna tighten this joker back up. 
Now, if you look back, rewind, or if you keep watching, you're gonna see that there is a little notch right here, and I'm gonna get that lined up to where it was before, because um, that's how I know that it's appropriately threaded on and tightened. All right, so I'm starting to thread this back on just with my hand to make sure I get it started correctly. I'm gonna grab my 3 8 drive, start torquing on it. Perfect. All right, that piece is pretty much lined up with the driver tire, that little metal piece that I use for reference. And what I'll do is, uh, Give it one last little, yeah, it's in there good. You want it hand tight, you don't want to struggle to get it off. I might actually tighten mine a little too much last time um, since I struggled so much, but I think we're good to go. All right, we're ready to either put the skid plate back on or what I prefer to do is actually put the oil in the truck first so I can check for leaks before I put the skid back on. So we're gonna do that next with a clean funnel. All right guys, this isn't the best angle, but I think you can see we are going to turn this to the left, might be on there pretty good, put it in a safe place and find a way to insert our funnel so that it stays still. Now this takes 6.6 .6 quarts, so I'm going to add that. I might add 6.5 and check since there could be some oil left over hiding in the motor. Uh, putting 6.5 will not hurt your engine. Just put a little bit less than 6.6 .6, and then we're going to check the check the dipstick here in a minute. Alright, we're back in the truck. I'm going to crank it. Make sure we don't have any warning lights. And just let it run for about, I don't know five minutes, make sure we have enough oil in there, and then I'll show you how to reset the maintenance reminder and check the dipstick. One quick thing with the skid plate is these are supposed to be locked in. I have to manually line these up, and I'm going to show you that process, but just be aware that yours may be locked in, and if they're not, you can follow this process. If they are, your life will be way easier than mine's about to be, so just make, a, make yourself aware of that. So this is a pretty tough one to record without a camera person, but essentially what I've done is I've gotten this bolt started and that bolt started in the back. And you can see those right down there. And uh, what I'm gonna do next is pretty much come in from this angle and grab my washers and line them up where I know they should be. You might have to hunt for them if yours fell off like mine. I'm just going to put the camera down slowly for one second. Try not to make you guys dizzy. And I'm going to line those up. So let me show you. Right on top of the hole. So next, I'm going to put you guys over here. Make sure that's a, yeah, that's a decent angle. Now with my bolts in hand... I'm gonna go ahead and slide both through without touching it so that I know that those little washer cup things are on. Just like that. And then I'm gonna carefully lift the skid all the way into place and try to find my mount hole. Which can prove difficult without the back all the way tightened. But it is possible. And you guys are going to see that today. At least I hope. My YouTube career relies on this. Sometimes you got to get your, get your head in the game. There's one. There's number two. Come on. Just like that. I'm gonna back this one out because I didn't like the way that it started. And especially before I put an impact gun on it. 
I want to make sure it's not cross threaded guys I know that this is a lot of time spent just on this one task but I can't emphasize the importance of getting this right I don't want you messing up your TRD Pro and every now and then you just got to reset and make sure that your bolt, your bolt uh, kind of wash your things in there and essentially what I like to do is put my Milwaukee on power one which is really an easy thread just get them started real nice and then I'll uh, I'll finish it out with hand tools so next I'll just take my uh, half inch drive and tighten it down just like that. We'll get into the torque spec in two seconds. So the torque spec on the skid, the torque spec on the skid is 22 pounds. Let me get my camera to focus here. So we're going to go past zero, past 10 to 20, right there. You guys see that 20? I just want to go to two right here. That's how you work a torque wrench. And I'm still using my 14. So my dogs get out of the way. We're just going to make sure click, 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 click. So they're on there good. That joker's not going anywhere. So at this point, we're pretty much done outside of resetting the maintenance reminder, pulling the truck off the, uh, pretty much the Rhino ramps, putting those up and checking the oil. So I'll go ahead and pull the truck off. Let's reset that maintenance reminder while the truck warms up. We'll check the oil and then you're done. Okay, so here's how you reset the maintenance reminder. Insert your key. Turn to position one. Use this little knob to the right. You see that knob? I'm going to set it to trip A. And then what we're going to do with position A chosen is turn the truck off. And I'm going to have to use my face to hold the phone. Hold down the button while you turn the truck on. See it says resetting maintenance data while it's on trip A. Maintenance data reset. So now my wife knows when to tell me she needs an oil change, tire rotation, pretty much a trip to BT Willis garage. All right, let's go check that dipstick. All right, BT Willis garage fans, watchers, whoever you may be. Let's hope I got this right because sometimes when I'm making these videos, it's easier to pay attention to the video than it is the job itself. So, see where that oil level's coming to? About halfway. That means we're good. I'm gonna wipe it clean, and we're gonna do it one more time. All the way into the yellow, all the way out. And we're showing oil right up to full. I'm gonna say that we're good. Awesome. All right, guys, you be good. Subscribe for more fifth gen content. If you got a third gen, definitely subscribe. We also do some BMW, John Deere work, pretty much anything and everything. So I would appreciate it. Set your notifications on if you want to see when new videos are uploaded. Check out my other modification videos in the description in this video for links to products. Thank you, guys. Be good and don't litter.